Titan. On the first half, we're fighting three waves of enemies, starting with six Spectres, two Pyro, two Electro, and two Dendro, three Pyro Whopper Flowers, and four Serpent Knights. Right off the bat, what this tells us is that we need to be careful about what elements we bring into this chamber. First of all, it's worth pointing out that the Serpent Knights have some pretty nasty interactions when you are shielded, so you want to bring some strong healers for your sustain and avoid using teams that rely on shields to stay alive. For the same reason, I don't recommend bringing a Geo team onto this half. Next, the Pyro Whopper Flowers have very high Pyro res, so I also recommend avoiding teams that deal primarily Pyro damage. They don't have a ton of HP, so you can still brute force it with a Pyro team if you want, but if you're struggling to clear this half quickly, then it's just easier to run with a different element. Finally, based on the immunities of the Spectres that we see here, we're going to want to avoid teams that only deal Pyro, Electro, or Dendro damage. This doesn't mean that you can't use those elements at all, but if you do, just make sure you bring a mix of elements to deal with the different Spectres. For example, when I run Hyper Bloom on this half, which deals mostly Dendro damage, Yelan is a really strong choice in the fourth slot because she and Xingqiu can help take out the Dendro Spectres while my Hyper Bloom missiles take care of the rest. All that having been said, that leaves us with Hydro, Cryo, and Animo as the surviving elements for this half. And I would put Hydro slightly higher than the other two just because it's the best at dealing with the Whopper Flower Shields. Aside from being conscious of the elemental damage that we bring into this half, it's also worth mentioning that AoE damage is going to be the focus here since we're fighting multiple waves of multiple enemies. Animo characters that can help us group these enemies are obviously going to be extremely valuable here. And even if you don't have any of these, try to prioritize teams that can deal damage in a large area. For this run, I'm using a Reverse Melt Rosaria team. It's a team that deals a good mix of Pyro and Cryo damage, it has great healing thanks to this guy right here, and most importantly, it's really good at dealing damage to multiple enemies at the same time. After I clear out the Spectres, I like to run immediately to the back of the arena to lure the Whopper Flowers into this area. This not only groups the Whopper Flowers together and makes it easier for me to push them up against the wall, but it also gives us a better position to transition into our next fight against the Serpent Knights. When we're fighting the Serpent Knights, there are a few things that we need to keep track of. First of all, these two Serpent Knights, the Pyro and Cryo ones, they deal damage with long-ranged attacks. So we're going to be focusing our AoE damage around these two, with the expectation that the other two Knights will crowd around them because they are melee ranged instead. I usually like to focus the Pyro Knight first because it also has the Smoldering Flames debuff, which really hurts your survivability. So I want to get that debuff off the map as quickly as possible. Second thing is about this big Geo Knight here. When he puts up this big shield, he will block all sources of damage that come from in front of the shield. And it doesn't block it just for himself, it blocks it for everyone behind him too. So as soon as you see the shield come up, you want to prioritize getting behind him to cancel the attack, otherwise it's going to end up nullifying a ton of your damage. Third and final thing to be aware of, this blue knight, even though he is melee ranged, he occasionally uses this long range charging attack. If you don't position correctly against this attack, it can cause him to run really far away from the rest of the group. So try your best to keep yourself in line with him and the other knights, so if he does charge towards you, he's charging into the other knights instead of away from them. I know this is a lot to keep track of, and there's a lot of damage being dealt at the same time, so it's very normal to feel overwhelmed by this fight at first. But my advice is just to focus on one mechanic at a time. First, just try your best to focus your AoE damage on the Pyro Knight and Cryo Knight. And once you've gotten used to that target priority, then add on the Geo Knight and also adapt your positioning to his shield attacks. And after you're used to doing that, then also try to add on the Hydro Knight and start adapting to his positioning as well. If you take these incremental steps towards learning the mechanics of the fight one at a time, it will naturally get easier and easier, and the whole sequence of the fight will become second nature to you. One last thing before we get into team comps, as a DPS check, you're looking to clear this half with about 820 remaining on the clock. It depends on how strong your second half is, but most of the time you need 3.5 or 4 rotations to clear that side, so you want to leave enough time to account for that. 820 is the benchmark you're looking for if you want to know whether your team is strong enough for this half. Going into some other team comps now, earlier we mentioned that Hydro and Cryo are both good elements for this half, so naturally if you combine them into a freeze team, we can expect that to do pretty well too. Here I'm using an Ayaka freeze team, but Ganyu freeze should also work just as well. Freeze teams are actually the ones that gave me the fastest and most consistent clears on this half. The great thing about freeze is that you don't really have to worry about survivability or even positioning to a certain extent. Just the fact that the enemies can't do anything to you means that you can ignore a lot of the mechanics that you normally would have to worry about in a technically difficult fight like this. Of course, the obvious downside to most freeze teams is that they're pretty expensive to build, not just in terms of the characters that you have to unlock, but also the build investment that you have to put into them.
律令に従えもみちはちらま神里流透明we also briefly saw this one as well, but Hyper Bloom teams are also a great choice here. Excluding the Dendro Spectres, none of the enemies resist Dendro damage, so as long as you bring a secondary source of damage to deal with the Spectres, Hyper Bloom will take care of everything else for you. When we get to the Serpent Knights, same strategy that we discussed earlier, focusing our aim on the Pyro and Cryo Knights, while keeping track of the moves of the Geo and Hydro Knights and adjusting our position accordingly. <laughs> And finally, these are some teams that I personally can't showcase, unfortunately, but should work pretty well on this half. Both Nuvilet and Shao are known for being able to deal really good AoE damage, and they both pass the element check that we talked about earlier. On the second half, we have a relatively easier enemy, and this is the Perpetual Mechanical Array. For this boss, we're just looking for teams that can deal high single target damage, and really any element will work except for physical damage, because this boss is in the Ruin Machine family of enemies that have very high physical res. For this run, I've decided to run a pretty standard 4-star Hyper Bloom team. I've opted for Fischl in my 4th slot just to get a little bit more single target damage. The main mechanic to be aware of in this fight is that the boss will split into 4 Ruin Sentinels about 50 seconds into the fight. Or if you manage to bring its HP down to around 30%, it'll force it into this phase earlier. When it does split like this, what you're looking for is the Ruin Sentinel that has this golden ring around it. The boss will remain invulnerable until you defeat this Ruin Sentinel. After you defeat it, the boss becomes stunned for about 15 seconds, and this is your window to finish it off. In terms of phasing the fight out, what you're aiming to do is get two full rotations worth of damage before it enters the split phase. And then as the Ruin Sentinels are spawning in, you want to prep your third rotation, defeat that Sentinel as quickly as possible, and finally use your fourth rotation to finish off the boss. Because the fight has distinct phases like this, no matter what team you take here, it's usually going to take about four rotations to clear this side. And that's why 820 is kind of that golden time that you're aiming for when you're clearing the first half. You definitely can clear the side faster by getting the boss down to 30% and forcing it into its split phase before 50 seconds, but if you have enough damage to do that, there's a good chance that you probably don't need my guide videos in the first place. Going into team comps, like I mentioned earlier, you really have a lot of options on this half. Hu Tao is one of my favorites to run here, she's kind of my go-to carry when I just need really high single target damage. One downside to using Hu Tao here though is that she does rely on Hydro supports like Xing Chou and Yelan, and like we saw earlier in the video, Hydro damage is highly favored on the first half. So to be able to run Hu Tao on this half, you would need a team that can clear the first half without relying on Hydro too much, like the Reverse Melt Rosaria team that I was using, or maybe a Shao or Nuvilet team. We can also run a national team here. This is another family of team comps that are known for their high single target damage. Here I'm using a Raiden national team, but really any variation should work. While I did include this as an option for this side, a lot of players will probably want to keep Bennett on the first half, just because the strong healing that he offers is generally more valuable on that side compared to this side. Closing out with some team comps that I unfortunately don't have again, Tinati Spread and Navia teams are both very effective here, both offering very high single target damage. Navia is especially nice to run on this half, because she transitions very smoothly into the third chamber, so she's a great choice if you're aiming to do a full sweep of floor 12. Sorry this was kind of a long one because there was a lot of material to cover on the first half, but as long as it was, I hope it was just as helpful. The builds I used for the characters in this video will follow shortly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.